Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and you know what time it is? Radical Reggie's back! <laughs> Thanks for coming, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's been too long! I know, right, man? I'm excited to show a lot of pickles that we got from Portland that we haven't shown, and lots of other cool stuff that I think you guys will be excited about. So. Dude, I have, I have a holy grail in this video that I never, ever thought I would own. I know, it's gonna be amazing. Let's take a look. All right, dude, who goes first? You. Me? Oh, okay. yeah. Wow. I feel like I take that crown too much. Like, I always go first. So it's your turn. <laughs> okay. So I've got a, a mix of stuff here. Like I said, I'm going to save my Holy Grail for the end. Okay. But this could be pretty cool because I got some new stuff and some old stuff. And the new stuff, let's start with the new Kirby game on the Switch. <laughs> I heard a lot of good things about this. It is excellent. This is such a good game. I love Kirby. I've played, I think, all of them at this point. And this is the very first time that Kirby has gone full 3D. Mm -hmm. So it's a post-apocalyptic world. Kirby is, it's post-apocalyptic, yet it's got that Kirby vibe. It's all fun. It's all, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's, you know, it's so excellent. Yeah, I, I, I want to I wanna try this out. The last Kirby game I actually played was the Planet of Robobot. Oh, that that's... one was really a lot of fun. So yeah. they, they pretty much put a lot of like effort when they make a new Kirby game. So I'm excited to try this out because they wouldn't have went full 3D unless they knew how to do it right. They so. did it right because even though it's full 3D, it still feels like a full-on Kirby game. You're still swallowing up your enemies and absorbing mm -hmm. their powers. Uh, you upgrade your powers. There's a lot of variety in the levels. There's plenty of hidden collectibles to get in this game. There's a post-game aspect to it. So there's a lot of content. Uh, I couldn't be happier. It's an excellent game. Right on, man. Heck yeah. All yeah, right. check it out. Okay, um, you guys are going to be kind of familiar with this. You're probably tired of me showing this game off, but I have to show this off again. This is... Um, you must own every version of this game now. I actually do own every version of this game out right now. Xeno Crisis for the Neo Geo AES. Uh, Bitmap huh. Bureau sent this to me. And um, I see this? just very excited to have this because uh, I was very ecstatic about this game uh, when they oh, first yeah. announced it and I did a lot of videos about it. And uh, they made an AES version of it. And the AES version is different from the other versions where it adds voice acting to the game, which is really cool. Oh, so, really? Yeah, they have voice acting during the cutscene, so that's really cool. And it just... It's just all kind of awesome. I, I've talked about this game before to you guys. Uh, if you're familiar with games like Smash, like uh, I almost said another game, it's called uh, Smash TV. Yes. Um, definitely, you'll know what you're getting into here. Uh, they did a really good job on this game, and um, just wow. very cool to have this. Uh, look, look how substantial these cartridges are. I like, know, it's, right? <laughs> it's heavy. Like this is a real game here. <laughs> yep. So they really put it all in there man so congrats to them for putting out an awesome yeah. game like this man i'm just really well, proud to own that again it's such a great game i played it i i geez i have the dreamcast version i have the ps4 version i've mm -hmm. got the switch version i mean <laughs> and i just keep replaying it yeah because yeah. it's just that kind of game so it is it really is wow amazing okay next up is gonna be another game An another game another new game <laughs> <laughs> lots of games but yes. this one's new uh, Star Wars, the, the uh, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. I got this for the Xbox Series X. Okay. So this is the latest S Lego Star Wars game. Based on the last three films? Based on all nine films. All, oh, all, all together. The, yeah, all together. Okay. So, and uh, what's cool about this, so they've done a lot of Lego Star Wars games in the past. This is technically all new. It's not a remaster of anything. They've gone back and kind of redid all of it. And the, the big change here is that instead of being kind of more top down and kind of zoomed out, right. this is more third person kind of over the shoulder look. Okay. So it's got a little bit more of a kind of a modern vibe and it changes it quite a bit. Like it feels definitely more like a third person shooter almost you know right. but yet it, it still has all the excellent humor uh all the great collectibles and things like that and i've been enjoying it because i love star wars so any and i love the lego games well so. it's nice to know this has online so have you ever played online with anybody else i haven't played this one online but i did co-op with some of the previous previous ones with okay. rebecca and that's super fun because right it, on. it's dropping you know co-op at any time and suddenly you have two people and this one does split screen down the middle of the screen i don't know if there's any other version of it, but rebecca and i, I were playing this on the couch mm -hmm. and uh so 
you're going to want a large television because it does divide the screen in half. So that's the the only thing to keep in mind. But um, I love these games. This is has not disappointed. So turn on, man. Yeah. Okay. okay um, something a little different here. Um, I got these cool pixel frames. Uh, oh, these are the new ones released. This one, first one here is is a Contra. Did you notice that I have some of these in the bathroom? Do you? Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I didn't even notice, man. Not wow. this one, though. I haven't seen this one before. Well, this one is of Contra, and obviously that that, that scene right there is pretty epic. Yeah. And everything like that. Um, these they are really neat. They are, man. And um, here is one of Tetris that I got, and I thought oh, this cool. was pretty cool. I was actually going to send this to one of my friends, but he got so excited when he saw it, he just already just went and bought it. So I guess I get to keep that one, but um, that's really cool of Tetris and everything like that. But my favorite one here, <laughs> oh, man. I was ecstatic when I when I saw this one. Um, my favorite beat 'em up uh, game of all time. Nice, yeah. You got the Double Dragon. Nice. Uh, perfect scene. Uh, this that. Well, oh my gosh! Like that was the game. One of the games that got me to love beat 'em up games. Um, yeah, that's cool. Seriously. And just this the three D aspect of these. They're so cool. Mm hmm. So. Huh. Uh, they're 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 putting out some really good ones. I, I I'm hoping one day they'll actually do Double Dragon too. That's another one I really like. So, uh, but yeah, that just that is. And officially licensed. Over. Which yes. is pretty neat. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> well, very cool. Getting some decorations for the for the house or the game room. Definitely. Always. Okay, next up is another newer game for me. We're going on PlayStation 5 and uh, Metro Exodus, the complete edition. So have you played any of the uh, the, the Exodus games? Yeah. Or Metro, well, sorry. Well, games. briefly, they were, they're really like uh, kind of like a... Like, it's like you're underground and you're living in the bunkers and stuff. The it's previous like really, ones. It's kind of depressing in, oh. in a way. That's why I kind of like stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. So I, I forget which one this is. I don't know if this is the third one or what, but you don't have to have played all the previous ones. The ones you're referring to, yeah, that they're mostly underground. Yeah, it's like cold weather. I'm like, man. Yeah, it's sad. post apocalyptic, right? Yeah. It's really gro gloomy. This one, I will say, it, this is not necessarily like that. It has moments, but actually, uh, spoiler, you. you get out of the city in this one and you, you travel on a train across the countryside so you okay. actually go into many different environments in this game which is what i liked about it because I, I agree with you the other ones i didn't finish because they're bleak and everything they're, they're bleak but they're also kind of uh yeah they're kind of if you played fallout you feel like you've played these games in, gotcha. in some regard okay. this one not so much i i love this game i finished it uh i what a, the thing about this game is that it had great characters it had laugh out loud moments in this game. Yeah. Not like a comedy, but just like the characters were very well written and very likable and uh, you could relate to them. And again, getting out of the city a little bit, going into the countryside, seeing what the rest of the world kind of looks like mm -hmm. after this event. Um, you don't necessarily have to have played the previous ones because I didn't finish those. Uh, this game fills you in fairly quickly in the beginning. Okay. I loved it and it looks beautiful on the PlayStation 5. Like it's got. It, I, I, I don't know all the technical stuff, but it, it, it's, yeah. it, it appears like it's got ray tracing and all that sort of yeah. fancy stuff, too. So it was beautiful to play. Ooh, it takes up quite a bit of room, too. 78 gigs. I'm Ooh. not surprised. It's a big game. <laughs> but again, I but love it. But does it run at 60 frames? I don't remember. Okay. It probably does. Hopefully it does. If not, it probably still looks good. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. If I remember right, a lot of these PlayStation 5 games have an option. It's either performance or graphic. So depending I feel on... Like it should be both, though. Like, well, you know what I mean? Well, it, I mean, in a, in a perfect world, yes. Yeah. But, but you know, sometimes if you want all of the, the graphical enhancements, mm -hmm. the, the trade-off is performance. Right. Versus, you know, if some people want true... 60 frames a second or better, then sometimes mm -hmm. you do have to turn off some of the graphical stuff. So. Yeah. All right. Man, this looks interesting. I might actually check this one out, man, because, uh, like I said, you don't have to play the other ones to get into no. this one, so that's that's a good sign. Right oh, on. I hear my, my, my cat is calling. So while you're getting your game, I'm going to get my cat in. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you need to get out? All right, so um, next game here um, is a game I just recently beat. This is Horizon Forbidden West. You beat it. Yeah, I, man, I, okay. was, I was going for a platinum in this game. I got, I think I have like 80% of the trophies so far, but then I, the, the rest of the trophies are kind of tedious, so I don't know if I'm going to really spend time to try to get them. I may in the future, but this is a really fun game. Uh, definitely a really good sequel. Um, maybe some people may feel it's better than the first one and everything. I think they did a really good job on it, and the story really takes a turn for something I didn't really expect, so I really had a good time with this one. Um, 
I think we, I think I talked about this game. We did a pickups video year, a couple years ago, and I, I talked about the first game, how much I liked it. Yeah, and, and I liked the first one a lot as well. Yeah. And actually, I picked this up for PS5 and played it for for a while. I didn't get to the plot twist that you are referring to, but okay. I know what you're you're talking you kind about. Of have it, okay, I do, and, and yeah, and I'm, it goes in a pretty interesting place. I was very surprised. Yeah, uh, I remember playing the first game, and I loved it so much that I, I'm the type of person like I do side quests later. But I was doing all the side quests before the main missions, just yeah. doing everything. I, this everything I could get out of this game, I was doing, and. Um, so far, I, I've done all the side quests. Obviously, I beat the main mission and uh, all the errands, and I'm just, I want more story. But um, I just really had a good time with this game. It's very rare that I really do that to certain games yeah. anymore. So this one was definitely worth it. And um, I think a lot of people will enjoy this one too. Yeah, totally. All right, well, next up for me, another PS5 game. Uncharted, this is what ah. Legacy of Thieves Collection Remastered. So this is... The fourth game, uh, Thief's End and The Lost Legacy. Lost Legacy, okay, with the, the, the two ladies. Okay. Yeah, with the two ladies on it. But again, it's remastered for PS5. Uh, I replayed the, the fourth game in its entirety and absolutely just fell in love with that game yeah. again. You know, it's funny because the first time I played the fourth game, uh, Thief's End, on the PS4, I, I felt like it dragged on a little long. But going back and replaying it, mm -hmm. I actually I enjoyed it more. Yeah. I think it's because I... I don't know. I did, maybe well, because I knew what to expect, but uh, well, I, probably, I loved it. Well, not that the first one loaded longer or anything like that, but like faster loading oh, and yeah. the pace is going really like good. It probably kept me like on yeah. your toes, so that's a good thing. Yeah. You know what? I mean, I hope hopefully hopefully some of you guys agree with me in the comments. But my favorite Uncharted is actually Uncharted Three. I, I love that one. That's funny you mention that because I love Uncharted Two. Only because when it came out, it blew me away. Well, it, 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 the it, ending it. is a pain in the ass, though. Like that last <laughs> boss battle, it pisses me off. But the game itself, I love. So it's funny, though, that you like the third one because, again, on the third one, I was like, other than the sandstorm stuff, I was like, oh, I, I felt like well, I had already well, that played. part where you're racing to the city, man. I was like, man, this is this is great, man. And then this yeah. one, you and Sully are like, uh, Sully's in most of the game with you, which was awesome. Sully is one of my favorite characters, so huh. I. Yeah, part three. But I, I like them all. But yeah, I do like them all. Well, would have made this even crazier if they had got the Vita version on here. If they got the Vita version, that would have been pretty cool. Wow, that's know. yeah, that's true because that's stuck on the Vita because it, it uses so much of the touch and all the, the mm -hmm. Vita specific stuff. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So uh, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna replay the, the, the what does they call the second one? The Lost Legacy. The Lost Legacy. I actually need to beat that one myself. I, 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 I beat it the first time and I did enjoy it. But again, it, these are the type of games they're pretty long anyways, and so right. I do need to kind of have a little bit. Of space in between them otherwise yeah it's hard for me to, to play 16 18 hours of one game then and jump into, into another, another yeah. one just like that yeah you need a little, little break i hear yeah. you on that cool pickup man yeah okay uh game i actually wanted to talk about in one of our last pickups videos but i forgot it hmm. road 96 um people have been talking about this okay yeah Tell road me 96 is, is a lot of fun it's it's a, basically a, a an adventure game where you play as uh, teenagers Hmm. Uh, they're, they're pretty much like like trying to get out of state because of some politics. I don't want to go too much into the story with the hmm. politics, but uh, they got to get out of the state. And um, the game is so random when you start it because uh, you play as five different teens trying to get to the border. And you always start off in a different a random situation when you start a new game. So basically the first time I played it, uh, I was in the car with a, a teen, uh, underage teen driving the car. This kid, kid was like 15 years old driving the car, huh. and we're trying to get out of state. And um, I'm answering questions and stuff like that. And depending on what you say, you can either stay with them or you can leave. I end up leaving, and it was it's at nighttime. And then I got arrested by the cops and everything like that because there's a curfew. <laughs> so the, the decisions you, you you make in this game really like uh, like is shape out. Like, is it like the Telltale games? It's kind of like that, but these decisions really matter because the Telltale okay. games. I feel like the decisions you make in those games just they end up being the same. Well, occasionally there would be one, but you would never know exactly what that would be. Right, right, right. right. Huh. But uh, you meet a lot of people on, on, on the journey. Uh, it's just it's just a really amazing experience. And, and the music in the game, it's just so 90s. It's like the voice acting. I mean, it's so much stuff I want to say about this game. I've talked about it before, but it's like it's just it's so good. <laughs> and I think it's like everybody should try to experience this game. Um, well, okay. so I'm trying to go over more experiences with it, but... 
Yeah, you guys, if you guys yeah. have played this, let me know what you think. Because Road 96 is something else. It's something special. Um, you just really feel like you're immersed <laughs> in the world and everything like that. So, Is it called Road 96 because it takes place supposedly in 1996? Or? Um, well, that, that's I think so. But there's also the Road 96 too, though, that you have to oh, get to. Oh, okay. You know, that's the word. You get the Road 96, then, well, I can't spoil too much. But yeah. Huh. Um, <laughs> Okay. Definitely, the game is set in the 90s, so oh, it um, is. you're not going to okay. be having some kid, people using phone booths to talk and everything like that, oh, remember okay, that, yeah. so yeah, very cool game, definitely check this one out, guys, uh, you will not regret it. Okay, alright, next up for me is a PS4 game called Red Death, this ah. is by Red Art Games. That sounds the, like a shoot 'em up It is a okay. shoot 'em up uh, it is a bullet hell style shoot 'em up it's vertical, and I love these kind of games. This is really interesting though. You guys are seeing the footage because it has a very unique style. It's a very retro looking kind of simplistic style. Um, I like the style. However, because of it, it is very hard to, it's hard for me to dodge the bullets because sometimes the bullets blend in with the background, mm -hmm. uh, the red on red and, and that, some of that sort of stuff. So uh, this game is meant to be very difficult. So that's part of, you know, you just need to kind of know that going into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, anytime I can get a a shooter on physical, yeah. I am I it's, like, it's like a blessing to have, have these get physical, so yeah. definitely. And we've been really lucky in the last couple of years that a lot of them, especially some of these these smaller publishers like Red mm -hmm. Art Games, and that they do that. They put them out on physical so that you can archive them, which is awesome, right? Yeah, exactly. Keep them forever, so. Right on, man. Yeah. Okay, um, hey, here's another shooter here. Oh, okay. Uh, Sturmwind EX uh, for the Switch. Um, oh, okay. I've heard of this yeah. is on the Dreamcast or something. Right? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it officially, it was re released on the Dreamcast uh, years ago, and now um, uh, Pix and Love has released it on the Switch. Dude, and, this uh, packaging is killer. I know, right? Wow. A really, a really cool shooter. I uh, actually, I actually did a review on this years ago, and it has it has a really good story to it if you if you pay attention to it. But um, man, just an awesome shoot 'em up. You, I think a lot of people will like it, and I'm not sure if a lot of people have heard of this one. Um, Again, for me, as it, it's it, did it come out on the Dreamcast? Is that what yeah? It officially okay. came out on Dreamcast years ago. Okay. And now, of course, we're seeing it on Switch because being on the Dreamcast after the after the Dreamcast is kind of like died yep. off. It, it's probably a niche crowd only knows oh, about sure. it. So being on the Switch now, you know, it's got more eyes on it. A lot yeah. of people won't know about this one. But um, okay, I want that. <laughs> yeah, de definitely a cool, cool shooter. Um, yeah. Huh. All right. Next up for me is another PS5 game. I'm kind of getting some of the newer ones out of the way here. Yeah. Uh, this is called In Rays of the Light. So this is a first person adventure game mm. and it's post-apocalyptic. You kind of wake up and you're not entirely sure what's going on here. It's one of those kind of games where you're just sort of like, I, people are people. Some people describe it as a walking simulator. I don't think that's accurate. You do you do a lot of puzzle solving in this game. It's okay. not just going from location to location, but it definitely has a lot of atmosphere. You're wondering what the heck is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't stay out in the sunlight for very long, and you're not in the beginning. You're not entirely sure why. Oh wow! That's okay. all I'm gonna say about that. Okay. But uh, it's a really interesting and fun game. And again, it, it's gonna be one of those games where. You know, so yeah, I just got like a little booklet there. It's got, you cut, it's got the manual. I know. That's, that's, that's um, impressive. It's just one of those games where you, you, going into it, don't read a lot about it, mm -hmm. don't don't look at walkthroughs, just kind of wander it's around. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty fun. So, uh, and it looks beautiful on the PS5 too. So, right on, really man. enjoyed this game. Okay. Okay. I have to be careful what footage I show though, because I don't want to give stuff away. Right, right. And next game here is um, a really cool one. This is Always Awakening. Um, hmm. This is a um, a platform adventure game. It's very similar to games like um, you played Le Legend of Zelda 2: The Adventures of Link, or any other Metroidvania type games. Um, you'll know what to expect here. So this is the first two games. Uh, the first game being uh, that's the 8-bit version. Um, that game is really cool. But once you get to I Was Awakening, the game goes into like 16-bit and everything like that. So you can see the graphical changes and everything like that. Hmm. Very cool games. Very nostalgic to old school. Uh, like 8 bits and 16 bit games. A lot of people like this. A lot of people don't even know this has got a physical release hmm. and everything like that. So I think it's definitely something people want yeah. to pick up. And if you get the physical, you know, you get some stickers inside. Yeah, it's pretty these, cool. These cool stickers. These look cool. You know, manual, but you know, you know, I like when they put something in that groove. It shows you that they care. Yeah, it does. And you so. know what? So we didn't get a manual, but honestly, the stickers are pretty cool too. And you probably, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, use those more maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I just put stickers on that TV over there. Yeah, or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But definitely huh. something I think a lot of people will like and very, very nostalgic. Okay. All right. 
uh, speaking of nostalgic, this is old school for me. Uh, so, uh, do you ever play Montezuma's Revenge? I know you're not an Atari guy, but I you know, heard of it, but I never in the ride at Knoxbury Farm. If anybody remembers that, if it still exists. Oh, was it was that the name of a ride? Yeah, Knoxbury Farm in California. I don't know if it still exists. Oh, let us know in the comments though. Well, <laughs> back on the Atari 2600, you know that was such a primitive machine at the time that there weren't a lot of platformers. But the, uh, you know you had Pitfall and Pitfall 2, and you had Montezuma's Revenge, which was a fantastic platforming game. Okay. Um, and but it never came out on the NES. And essentially, what they're doing is they're kickstarting a brand new version of this. I believe it's fully licensed. Um, for the original NES and so this was a review copy sent to me so it's a little bit advanced depending on when this video comes out the Kickstarter may or may not be active mm -hmm. but uh, this is a fully working version of that classic game it looks fantastic on the, the NES right there's no reason why it didn't get ported over uh, it just I don't know for whatever reason it didn't but it's a really cool game where you are a, a treasure hunter in these pyramids going room to room there's tons is there like of traps? Is there like traps and stuff like that stopping you to get yes okay. yeah there's all sorts of traps it's a very unique platforming game in that you absolutely cannot fall in most cases so mm -hmm. so there is a lot of skill to this game it, it feels very specific like if you played montezuma's revenge you know what i'm referring to where okay. it has its own piece of challenge to it in that you have to really be careful with your jumps and how far you fall so that's just one of the things about this game and do you trigger traps and stuff too like, oh yeah yeah and there's snakes see, and there's all sorts looking of at stuff. this cover here it reminds me of this pc game i used to play when i was a kid it was called pharaoh's tomb and oh, it, feel, okay. it feels like it was like the same type. It's like an Indiana Jones adventure game like this, but there was traps. I'm sure it's similar to this, yeah. Yeah. Very cool, man. Yeah, so it's cool that they're doing a Kickstarter for this. So, uh, okay. you know, if, if it's something that you're interested in, uh, check it out. So, right on. You guys like survival horror? Well, I hope so. <laughs> um, we have Tormented Souls for the PS4 and Switch. Okay. Uh, Tormented Souls is. Uh, is kind of a throwback survival horror to when survival horror really was popular, the golden age of survival horror. When I, I want to say like kind of like Resident Evil up until Resident Evil Code Veronica, like like that era. Um, it has uh, fixed camera angles, which a lot of survival horror games don't have anymore. Right. Uh, that's that's what I feel like is the golden age of survival horror, and um, it is done well. Uh, and it, I don't know if they did this on purpose in this game. The voice acting is kind of cheesy, so I'm not really <laughs> sure. But that, that, that's kind of that's nostalgic to me, so I like that. Type yeah, stuff. yeah, me too. But basically. Uh, the, the beginning of the game, just give you guys a little premise of it. It's um, you start off, you get a letter, and you have the you find out the letter is like some kind of weird picture of you and this girl. So you go to this mansion, and um, you end up getting knocked out and um, something taken away from you, and mm -hmm. um, it's pretty messed up, man. It's it's kind of dark. You have to like use your lighter to light up certain areas or anything like that. And if you walk into the darkness too, like if you walk into the darkness without like lighting anything up, you get pulled into the darkness and you'll get killed. So you have to be very careful. You meet weird people. It, it's like all over the place. It, the game's dark at first, but I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll, you'll be able to light it up later. I haven't got that far in it, <laughs> but it's very, very like, like tense. I really like it. So definitely, I this is for a lot of survival horror fans, especially if you like to throw back the old school ones. So I think a lot of people it, like to it, pick it this one up. It comes with a physical map. It does. It does, and you'll need that map to yeah, survive this game. <laughs> so you know, get that um, remembered. <laughs> cool. Awesome. All right, next up for me is a Switch game. It's called Book of Demons. So this game really surprised me. So I had heard that it was basically like a classic style D&D game, mm -hmm. but it is really like trying to emulate almost like uh you know tabletop D, D where every everything has kind of like this paper almost pop-up book look to it mm -hmm. so when you're moving around you're kind of moving on this grid and i love this game i yeah. got sucked into this game so much i i actually I, I never played a lot of actual physical D&D, &D, but I used to play a lot of the old school mm -hmm. SSI computer ones, and this was really reminding me of that. So, yeah, so I was, got it down. Nice, dude. That's I was good digging to know. this game. I, I I put hours into this and hours into this game. So, really surprised me. I didn't really know that much about it, but I heard some good things, and um, I'm glad I got it. So, and it's on the Switch. So, right on, man. Yeah, super rare, man. They're knocking it out for the Switch. Yeah. I think I told you about this one before, man. This is a Fishing Star World Tour. You messaged me about this. You're like, dude, you gotta buy this. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's kind of crazy too, Vic, because um, I found out when I was telling you that because I remember going out and hunting, you might find it and everything like yeah. that, but it's actually Amazon exclusive when mm. it comes in this bundle pretty much like that. So I had to pick it up. Um, That's the type of stuff 
20 years from now, that is going to be so hard. Like, th that's going to be the thing where yeah, someone's going for a complete collection. It's like, that's the thing that's they're, going to be They're missing it or something like that because yeah. it's like an exclusive on Amazon. A yeah. lot of people might not know that, but it's a fun fishing game. I tried to ride out and it actually worked pretty well. I was actually happy, but what's really going to suck you into this game too is the environments you fish in. Hmm. It's really a lot of fun. And I think they really got the fishing mechanic down. You know, I'm not, I've never played that fishing game on the Dreamcast years ago. Oh, I did. There's, there's two of them on there. Um, um they were pretty good, or how oh yeah, it? that's the thing about fishing games, dude. I remember back in the '90s when I first heard of a fishing game. Mm -hmm. It was Trophy Bass, actually, and I was like, "This is stupid. Who who would want to do a fishing game?" And then I played one, and I was like, "This is really fun," <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it can be relaxing, but it can also be stressful because you're you don't want to break the line. You're trying mm -hmm. to, you know, I've never gone fishing in real life, so. Right. But yeah, video game fishing actually is kind of addictive, and and honestly, when there's a mini uh, like like in Kirby, there's a there's a fishing. Oh, they got game. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And again, I get sucked right back into it. I'm like, yeah, it's so funny. So yeah. there's a, also one on on the Oculus Quest uh, VR. Uh -huh. too. Yeah. Well, this is for you though. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh dude, one, that's awesome. I, well, here I am talking about. It. I'm like, hell yeah, I'll check it out. <laughs> That is so funny, dude. I, I assume, did you get two of them? Of course, man. Of course. <laughs> I get one for me, so. Yeah, man, I thought you'd like that, dude, so. Wow, oh yeah, I'll, I will check that out. Thank you, dude. That's awesome. All right, well, next up for me, I'm gonna skip to this one, I think. Speak, uh, speaking of survival horror. Ah. The physical version, I got this through PlayAsia, they, they sent this. Uh, Maiden of Black Water. So this came out on the Switch. I believe this was originally a Wii U game, right? Yes, uh, yes it was. Yes it was. This is the fifth game in the Fatal Frame series. And, yeah, I, I, I hope I'm right. I could, you are. Okay. You are. So they did a physical version of it. I bought this from PlayAsia. Um, and if you're not familiar with the, the Fatal Frame series, I originally played the second one back on the PS2 and they're really fun. They're basically, they're very traditional Japanese horror ghost stories. Uh, they've got like this filter on it that kind of makes it look kind of cinematic and old and basically you use this camera called the camera obscura or something like that mm -hmm. and the way combat works in quotes is that you take a picture of of the ghost which then steals its soul or something like that, that so you know how terrifying that would be if you say hey there's a ghost right there yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> and yeah it's, it's so that's that's a good point so in these games you're kind of doing this balancing act of where sometimes you have to run but then you have to very quickly switch around and look, look yeah look through the the viewfinder to did you ever to, get to the moment where you like you switch to the camera and then white when you're in first person the ghost is right there oh right. this game does cheap stuff like that all yeah, the time you know and so you have to know going into it that it's got some cheap stuff like that but i actually think they're pretty fun i I like the fact that they're very Japanese, so they don't feel like any other type of game that mm -hmm. you are playing probably today. That's what I liked about the originals, and it was cool to get this. So, okay. uh, yeah, I was having fun with it. Right on, man. Let's see what I got here. Oh, man. This one might be cheating, but I had to talk about this one. Um, this is the King of Fighters 2002 Unlimited Match. Another edition. Neo Geo. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So this remember a couple of videos ago, I, I got the rec limited edition, but this is the deluxe edition, and uh, it comes with a different cover. But mainly, it came with a po came with a poster. I didn't bring the poster because it was yeah. taking up a lot of room. But sure. we'll do some B roll of that. But um, this is probably one of the coolest things I got from from uh, Pix and Love. And uh, man, this is awesome. I love King of Fighters 2002, as you guys probably already know, but the freaking poster, oh, well, not, even, oh, I don't, I'm, not even a poster. It's like this, um, it's, it's just like that one right there, um, the one of the Zelda one you have right there. They, it's like an acrylic print or something Thank like you. that. Thank you, that's yeah. the word I was looking for. And uh, it's so freaking cool. And I was just like, King of Fighters 2002 is one of my favorite fighting games of all time. So mm. to get that, get it like this, yeah. and get that, that poster was freaking so, fantastic. So, so I don't know if I've asked it, but you have a Neo Geo that will play these right now. Well, it's not Neo Geo, so oh, this it's, is, oh, this is for okay. PS. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, it comes just it's just for nostalgia reasons because you know if, I, I got and you. everything, okay. but no, it's it's, it's on a PS4 okay. and everything okay. like that. And I so. even opened it up and looked in there, and I didn't. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Thur. But you, but by, uh, by looking at it, you said, "Oh man, Neo Geo." This yeah, is yeah, like yeah. This card, so okay. Um, very cool. Pix and Love did that. I mean, does these? So I'm just very. Very happy to have. That's this. why it says two thousand megs. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be the, yeah, that'd be pretty. pretty yeah, big. that'd be pretty massive. All right. I, I'm all caught up now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next up for me, a Switch game. It's called Butcher. So this is another game by Red Art uh, Games. They published the, the physical version of Butcher. So Butcher is a dude. 
This is a 2D platforming game that we've seen a million times before. However, this one is hardcore. It's like blood everywhere, blood gushes everywhere. It, and uh, I, I, if I remember right, it, easy mode is the hard mode. There is no easy mode for this game. Really? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's for people who are looking for a challenge. And I was, I was having a blast capturing this footage. It's just, it reminds me actually uh, kind of like Doom, mm -hmm. if Doom was a 2D platforming game. It really is that okay. kind of like just blood guts, shooting stuff everywhere, picking up different weapons, mm -hmm. just trying to survive. So it was pretty fun. So okay. this is a cool game called Butcher. Right on, Check man. it out if you're looking for some challenge and definitely no easy mode. <laughs> no easy mode. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, next item here, got this one retro bit. Oh, um, cool. This is Mega Man The Wily Wars for the Sega Genesis. Finally got an official release after like 25 years. Whew. So, th so tell me exactly what this is, because I, I don't, to be honest, I, I don't know. So uh, Mega Man got an exclusive game on the Genesis called uh, Mega Man Wily Wars. It's basically the first three Mega Man games uh, upgraded, plus a bonus game, but it was only available through the Sega channel. You oh, the Sega channel? okay, the, the I, download service. Yeah, that would, dude, even back then we were like, damn, this is, this is slow. I mean, Did you like, have it? My buddy had it. Like, yeah. my parents wouldn't let me. It was expensive. But <laughs> <laughs> you had to re-download the game every time, though. You turned the system on, though, so well, it, it didn't stay. You know, it's funny because people don't remember that, you know, back in the day, whenever you would use a modem, I assume that's probably was the phone line, mm -hmm. that, you know, no one could pick up the phone because it was all oh, yeah. lines, right? Yeah, so, up yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, if your mom picks up the phone, forgets, and, you know, starts trying to dial out, she's, she's ruined the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That happened with me with my computer a couple times, and I yell upstairs, Mom! <laughs> Off the phone. <laughs> but uh, Retrobit um, uh, licensed this and, and published it, and uh, this, hmm. this is awesome. That, I mean, it's another Genesis game that we yeah. wanted years ago, and we finally got it. So I'm just happy to have this um, this collection. Now this collection comes with a, a bunch of stuff inside. Uh, it comes with these cards. That you yeah, can see they're here. like lenticular 3D or not 3D, but they uh, they move. Uh, what else it comes with? Because I, I forget what comes in here myself and everything. Like Probably that. stickers, stickers, oh, poster, collectible cards, there. cards, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. It just they're really trying to lace us up because yeah. it's been so long, you know. <laughs> well, they, they're the ones that did Holy Diver, which mm -hmm. which was awesome. Um, oh, gosh, what was that NES game that they did? Oh, uh, like, Metal Storm? Yeah, Metal Storm. Okay. I'm yeah, to... so they do really cool collectible mm -hmm. re-releases, basically. Yeah, I was looking at some of their, their new ones. They got, like, Battletoads and Double Dragon coming out mm. for Nintendo. That's kind of cool, so... Cause that game's really expensive, so nobody wants to pay like 500 bucks for that. So that's great. Well, that, that's yeah. like Metal Storm on NES. Again, mm -hmm. it's like it's a it's an actually f a fun game. It was really expensive, and so when they brought it out, I think a lot of people were like, "Thank you." <laughs> and they right pay crazy prices. All right, uh, what am I going to do here? I think I'll move on to this. So, um, ah, the Evercade keeps on going. Yeah, we were just talking about this off camera because he just recently got an Evercade versus, and. It's amazing the the continued support that they do for that that console, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. Uh, matter of fact, I had just found out that the system actually they give you a, a free game a month to download on there to try out and everything. It, it switches every month, so that's really cool that system does that. Yeah. It's and not only that, I mean, you're getting these games collections and everything like that with multiple good games on them. And it's just like. And what I like about it too is that the, it's not just the obvious choices like for instance here they got the gremlin correct collection which <laughs> yeah i know which is like again it's like you know or the, the 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 renovation collection so i like the fact that they're kind of going into areas that maybe other companies it, i don't know if they ignore them but you know what i mean it's like yeah. it, it, it it creates something that is unique to their system right right yeah so this has been really fun so again just uh what do we got here like 18 more games for the system mm -hmm. there must be what 200 games for that thing now or something it's a lot yeah it's a lot and they and they also they're also doing arcade uh, versions of games yeah. pretty much uh you'll see those in the purple cases yes and um Man, it's just it's just a nice seeing certain arcade games get a physical release for a yeah. home console. I love that. You yeah, know? And I think they have four versions. There are four volumes of arcade mm -hmm. as well. You're right. So these are either console or computer. They mix them mm -hmm. in, in between. And, they, and they come out with new games for the system too in these collections too, just to let you guys know. But yeah, just keep an eye on them because they have a lot of cool stuff coming out. I was actually really impressed. Uh, I'm just happy to have a like a, a arcade perfect version of Double Dragon Two. 
Yeah, right. any physical format. This is the first time it's ever happened. And the other thing too that they do, and I know we've talked about the system before, and it's cool. Again, full manuals and oh, the manuals right. always have like a little bit of. It, it's more than just pictures. They actually talk about the controls. They'll mm -hmm. talk about the game itself. Uh, they'll give you tips and tricks and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's a lot of love went into it. And a lot of detail, which is great. It so. is. It's cool. So, I want to mention that those came out. Okay, next up here is a uh, hmm. chicken range. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, it's, it's a gun. It's a gun in a game, but the reason I, I got this because I, a while back I found out the House of the Dead was going to get re-released on the uh, right on the on the Switch. Well, get a remake on the Switch and everything like yeah. that. So I said, oh, I said, "Wow, this would be perfect. I'll get this game for the gun accessory and I'll use it for House of the Dead." The game. I can't tell you too much about it because I, I don't plan on ever opening it because it doesn't look like a game I would ever play. But um, this whole thing cost 20 bucks at Best Buy. So I, I picked it up and I was like, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Huh. So um, some people may like the game. You know, I think it's definitely worth 20 bucks for this this, this box in the in the Well, like especially for the, the, the controller mm -hmm. adapter thing. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. You know, huh. good deal. Wow. If you guys have played Chicken Range, let me know if it's, I mean, we you never... all know it's not worth opening. But I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> Huh. That's it. Well, you're gonna have to open it because then you're gonna have to play the, the House of the Dead. Well, just not well, the game. Not the game. Not the game. I'm not gonna open the game, but I'll open the, the get the okay. gun out and everything like that. You but. might be able to get the. Well, I don't know. I was gonna say you could get it digitally, but I don't know. Yeah. Of course, if it sucks, why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it sucks. I'm just assuming with a name like that, right? Well, you guys let us know in the comments what you think of Chicken Range. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's worth the opening. They'll probably like it's the best game ever. We're like I know, right? Now we look like it's gonna throw me off. <laughs> All right. Next up is a game. I I was surprised to see this. Ah, uh, their studios. Yeah. So it's uh, Zeno Cider. Yes. Zeno Cider on mm -hmm. the Dreamcast. So this is a. I guess it's a brand new Dreamcast game, yep. right? Yes, it is. And you played this in, as well. And we I were, have. It, we it, were talking it, about this. It's that it's cha the the controls are funky for the, sure. The controls are very challenging. Uh, not impossible to get used to. Yeah. But um, when you play this game, it feels like you look at it, it's like something like Space Harrier in a way, or something close to that. Just not as super fast as Space Harrier. Because Space yeah. Harrier is like, like super. Fast. This is more complex than Space Harrier, right? Because right? I was, because you're having to do multiple things. I was, mm -hmm. I mean, it, and it very quickly in this game, I was like, wow, okay, I was getting overwhelmed. But uh, again, it's cool to see a brand new Dreamcast, Dreamcast game. game. Yeah, I know. And if you're a fan of games like Space Harrier, you'll yeah. probably like this one. Uh, it, it's like you said, it's, it's nice to see new Dreamcast games getting released mm -hmm. after all these this, these years, man. It's amazing. Oh, it's I like, know. I mean, we've seen so many Dreamcast games in the last five years. It's mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. Definitely. All okay. right. All right. Not a Neo Geo game. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> it's but another one from Pixel Love. This is King of the Fighters 15 uh, Collector's mm. Edition, and as you guys can see, it comes in a shock box. And um, King Fighters 15. A uh, uh, funny story to tell you guys. So I originally had pre-ordered it at um, at GameStop because they had this Omega edition, but. When it came to pick, when I went to go pick it up, they tried to give me the standard edition. And when I went, I said, "Hey, where's the Omega edition?" They said, "Oh, sir, this is all we got." I was like, "But I ordered the Omega edition." What? Yeah, so I, I never got my pre-order. So I was like, "Dude, oh, what dude. the heck, man?" So I was, I was. That's the first time I never got my pre-order. Yeah. And um, I'm, I don't know if I ever pre-order again from GameStop. I just feel no. Nah, I'm just saying. I'm just kidding. But I don't know. I just feel like they kept telling me, "Hey, sir, you got to pre-order this." And then when I get, went to get it, they didn't get did it. Did it so. take you too long to get in? No, I made it in time. Huh. Because I, I know they've done that because I've gone in, um, gosh, when was that? Maybe it was like last year sometime and I was like, hey, do you have this game? And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, we do, but the pre-order's been sitting here forever. You know, so they sold you that one? It, yeah, and it's been like two weeks. We They haven't responded. Yeah, I went, so to, go I get it. I went to go get it the first day and uh, they just never yeah, got it. Yeah, they should it, hold so. it. I was like, man, what hmm. the heck? So um, I have this version now, which is cool, so I'm happy about that. But uh, definitely King of Fighters 15, a really good fighting game. Yeah, I, I like it a lot more, of course, than the 14 and everything like that. Um, lots of characters to choose from, uh, lots of detail in the story and everything like that. Um, mm -hmm. And they still got a, a few more characters that are going to add to the list. Hopefully, they'll add some of my, my favorites and everything. But it's a really good fighting game. Like you guys know, I love the King of Fighters series. Uh, I don't think anything has surpassed King of Fighters 2002, but um, this one this one's up there. So okay. uh, definitely check this one out, guys. Wow. All right. Cool. Shock, what would you call that? Shock case? Shock, shock box, shock, shock case, yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right, uh, let's see here. We're getting down here a little bit. I'm gonna show these. So 
Again, when we're talking about old systems that are getting new games, mm -hmm. <laughs> who knew that we'd be getting so many Atari Lynx games? But that is all thanks to a, a, a publisher called Songbird Productions. Mm. They've actually been doing this for several years. I remember they had a table at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Oh, really? Oh. Three years ago now, mm -hmm. probably. But yeah, they've been they've been cranking out new old Atari stuff, which is pretty cool. So nice. the first one here is Sky Raider Deluxe, a redo. Mm -hmm. Redux, redo. I don't know. Redux, yep. Um, so that is a really nice looking version of, of River Raid, that classic, you know, Atari 2600 game. This is a, a version specifically for the Atari Lynx, and it looks fantastic. This one here is called 8 Bit Slicks. This is a top down <laughs> racing game. Now, what's really interesting about this one is that it supports this thing. So. <laughs> He has been releasing some games. I don't know how many he has. This might be the first, but this is called the 8-Bit Hub. And essentially what this allows people to do is multiplayer with an Atari Lynx. Wow. Not just <laughs> not just co on a couch, but Wi-Fi. Really? Yes. So you can connect a, a, uh, a keyboard to this. You can connect it to your Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. you, you connect it to your Atari Lynx, and you can play people over the internet. Wow, dude. That's, I know. Who ever thought that was a Lynx, man? Seriously? I know. It's just insane. So this is a... I, to be fair, I haven't actually set this up yet because, to be honest, the only person I know who also has one of these is John Hancock. Okay. And he's so busy that we haven't made it uh, made it happen yet. But uh, we're definitely going to. I thought that was pretty cool. Again, it's one of those things where the retro gaming community just keeps supporting something even like the Atari Lynx, which is very niche, mm -hmm. for decades. So I thought that was pretty cool. So Okay, uh, here is a Tandem. Hmm. A, ta wait, a Tale tandem? of Shadows. Okay. Uh, I got these uh, recently. So the reason I picked this game up was because um, it, it looked kind of like similar to like a Little Nightmares in a way. I figured I was getting into like oh, the same okay. type of gameplay. Uh, but the game is a, is a, a platform puzzle game, but it switches perspectives perspectives pretty much like first it'll be a top-down puzzle game and then when you switch to the other character hmm. it'll be like a side scroller but they they kind of intertwine with like kind of like finishing missions and stuff like that That's so cool. uh it's a very cool game it's about this little girl she's trying to find out uh find someone who got kidnapped and everything like that i can't remember too much because i'm still like in, on the first three stages of the game but it just seems like something unique that i would like and everything like that so mm -hmm. i'm actually enjoying it so far um <laughs> I just want to kind of get the word that is out. So, uh, Tandem, A Tale of Shadow. Never heard of this game before, so. Okay. Uh, next up for me is a physical Switch game here. This is by Pixel Heart. And I, I know we were trying to decide how to pronounce this, you and I. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, Andro Danus 2? Yeah. That's <laughs> Uh, all I know is that uh, I, I was excited that it was basically like a shooter, mm -hmm. another shooter. You know, you guys know that I, any chance I get to get a new shooter that's physical, oh, yeah. that's what's amazing about this generation is that there's so many of them. And this is a sequel to a game that was like uh, like, t like 20 years old and everything like that. It's like, man. Yeah, yeah great. I, don't, I don't know much about the original, to be honest. So. Yeah, it was on the Neo Geo and I believe in the arcade and everything like that. But, um, oh. Oh, okay. I, don't, I didn't really know too much about it because I, I only saw it once in the arcades. Hmm. At least I think I did. But um, Very quality game. Uh, you guys are seeing the footage here. Had a ton of fun playing this. So uh, Horizontal shooters are not necessarily my favorite ones, but mm -hmm. they're a nice change. So yeah. I've been enjoying that quite a bit. Definitely a cool one. Yeah. It's, it's also going to be coming out for the 3DS, if you can believe that. That game is? 3DS, man. Oh, well, I will get that because I love... Yeah. Because that means... I wonder if it's actually going to be 3D. It, I, it should have that function in there. I mean, I, it, it should. Turn the 3D That would be cool. I'm a sucker for that, so... <laughs> right on, man. All right. Um, let's see here. How many are you down to? I have two left. Okay. So, um... <clears throat> Here is Curse Castilia. Um, I hope I said that right. I always like mess this game's name up. Um, You've talked about this game in the past, right? I have. Did you finish this? I, you did yes, like a, a I, live stream of this. I did. I got the bad ending too. The <laughs> second bad ending. But um, you know, this game is pretty much similar to Ghosts and Goblins, as, mm -hmm. as you guys probably know. It is a lot of fun. It's finally released on the Switch, which is pretty awesome. It comes with a lot of cool collectible st stuff inside. Yeah. I took everything out and I'm having a hard time getting it back in the box. So I'll have to figure that out later. I, I, I sometimes run into that too, yeah. where I'm like, you know, you pull 
pull it all out because you're excited and you're like, oh man. Yeah, you don't want to beat the in. box up yeah, trying to get it back in. So uh, I think most people know about this game. It was actually called a, a Castle Matilda or something. That was the older name for it. I'm probably messing that up too. Oh, okay. But um, they upgraded it. It's a really cool game. Lots of fun. Uh, not as hard as Ghosts and Goblins was. I think this game is a lot more fair. But um, it's definitely something I think a lot of people would want to pick up if they're like into old school platform games, arcade platform games. So this has a bunch of stuff. So original soundtrack, it mm -hmm. has a cutout arcade thing that you can set up. Yeah, I would not set that up, but it's kind of cool. I've done those before. <laughs> and Yeah, and then again, you try to get it back in the box and yeah. it, it doesn't work. Uh, making of, it's got a little keychain. It's got a game manual. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right. All right, next up for me, I have two more things. Uh, the first one, I got in the, I ordered this a long time ago. I'm sure many of you did. Uh, it's called the Classics Collection of Doom. This comes with Doom 1, 2, and 3 for the Switch. Mm -hmm. I believe it also came out for the PlayStation 4 and stuff like that. This is just a beautiful version of this game. Um, it's, it has this diorama oh, here. Is that what that's nice. called? Yeah. And see, it lights up. <laughs> oh man, wow, that's freaking awesome. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Uh, and then plus it, it, it includes this version here, which has a bunch of extra stuff in here, including the game, uh, Steelbook. It's got a, a floppy disk of the shareware version. <laughs> it, it has the red key card. Okay. It doesn't do anything. It's just the, the it's, this the key card. Uh, plus, it's got a keychain. The uh, the one thing about this game, and I'm sure many of you are kind of wondering if I was going to comment on it, is that. Uh, there is a bit of controversy about this. So essentially what happened with this this version that this came out mm -hmm. and some people couldn't play it. Really? Yeah. So what happened was is that if you bought a Switch and you never ever took it online, mm -hmm. like let's say you just bought a Switch tomorrow and you never got a system update, you never put any of the network in, in, in there, Doom doesn't know what to do and it basically prompts you to log into uh, Bethesda net or something like that and you really? can't play it yeah so it's very unusual I think that and nobody you know that you would buy a switch and and never put it online for like a system update right right but there are people who have who've done that and ran into that issue Why? and ran into that issue the, the thing is though th that um, Limited Run is going to replace the the copy, so I'm I'm kind of tempted to do it as well. The thing is about this is that it's it's not so much of a big big deal to I don't want to say it's not a big deal, but you know most people will put their consoles online when mm -hmm. they get the modern systems. But 20 years from now, when you when you pick up a Switch, it may never have been online, and so yeah. you know to have a game that won't launch on it could be kind of annoying. The one thing that's kind of annoying for people though uh, is that in order to get the replacement for it, mm -hmm. uh, Limited Run, as of the making of this video, wants you to send in your original version of it. So I, I would have to send in my, my little SD card. Some people, when they buy Limited Run games, don't intend to open them. <laughs> That's not me. I open everything. <laughs> But there are some people who may never want to open up their Well, maybe their that, that, that version of the game will be like, worth some money for them in the future. Maybe that'll be um, I guess. cool, I, I guess. You know what Limited Run should probably do is that if you are one of those few people who have never had your Switch online and you would like a replacement, you just contact tech support and, and they should be able to look up your order number and see that you paid for it and just send you a replacement. I don't know. Okay. So I, there's a little bit of controversy. I'm completely aware of it. I'm probably going to get a replacement just in case for right. myself. But uh, regardless of which, it's a pretty cool collector's edition. It was, it I was it's pretty neat. So, All right, so my next game here, I'm winding down. This is Milty Blood Type Lumina okay. for PlayStation 4. So you've talked about this game before, right? Yeah, so this is a fighting game. It's made by the same creators of uh, Under Night In Birth. This is like the game they made before that. Hmm. And um, it's a really good fighting game, though. I think a lot of people don't know about it. I think it's gotten more popular on Steam now that it's on, it's on Steam and everything like that. But um, this collector's edition came with, like, a for this soundtrack and an art book and everything like that. And when I bought it, you know, it was it was a bit pricey. It was, like, I think it was, like, $110 from mm -hmm. Play Asia. But they sold out almost immediately. Huh. And then when they restocked it, they raised the price up for it. So I was like, they were like going for like 200, 300. I was like, wow, dude, that's Jeez. messed up. I thought they were going to like like have it for the regular price. And I regret my buddy, uh, Joel, Media Glitch. He wanted one too. I forgot to let him know that they went live. I thought he knew. <laughs> I wasn't there. I just went, I just went on there and bought it. And 
I just wish I had told those guys, man, because um, they would have got theirs too. But now everybody's trying to charge like 300 bucks for it or something like that. So it's a, um, so this is a Japanese release is what it looks like. Huh? Yeah, but the game plays in English. Okay. So um, you can follow the story if, well, you, if you care about that. The only reason why I mentioned that, maybe they could reach out to somebody that we know who recently moved there. Ah, And maybe that's right. that person can hook that other, you know, your buddy up. There you go. I'm just saying. I don't know. <laughs> it's a possibility. But um, it's a definitely a cool fighting game I think a huh. lot of people would like. I just wish... It's a nice box. Uh, it got a more wider physical release because uh, physical copies of just the regular edition like over a hundred dollars. I'm like, what? Really? It must be a good game. It is. It yeah, is. I'm, I'm liking it. All right. Well, the last thing for me is a holy grail item that I never thought I would own, and uh, here it is. Huh? Yeah. Do you notice anything unusual about it? Yeah, okay. Let me. This 3ds XL. Yep. And. Do you want me to give you a hint? Yeah, give me some kind of hint. This looks... it, it has a USB port. So. You got me. I would not even notice that. Yeah. So here's the thing. This is a modded 3DS that has video out. So or it has video out through its uh, its USB port. That means you can play? That means that you can, oh. you can output and stream or capture footage directly from the hardware. Dude. So that's why it's a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier than a normal one. That is awesome, dude. To play your 3DS games on your television? Yes. Well, yeah. it's tricky, it though, because it... You could do that. So the way it works is that it sends it to a piece of software that mm -hmm. runs on Windows. And through there, then you could do whatever you want to it. Okay. So, for instance, you could go to a laptop and it would go HDMI out. But the point is that you can capture, footage. capture real footage without having a developer unit. Right. So basically, the reason why these I never thought I'd own one is because the guy who used to make the, the custom board for this mm -hmm. stopped making them years ago. The reason why I have one in my possession now is because... Of Destiny FOMO. Oh. So she's been going through her collection. She this she's like, this has been sitting in her storage. She mm. she hasn't used it in years. And she she sent it, she she gave it to me. Nice. She didn't want any money for it. She just like she knows that I can use it for YouTube and uh, capturing footage. So thank you very much. She didn't even want shipping for that. It was a gift. Right so on, man. That was very, very nice of her. Uh, she, like, yeah, I was like amazed. So, and again, she wasn't using it. She didn't even really want to use it. So, perfect, man. Because uh, I know getting footage for 3ds games is a nightmare. It so. is, <laughs> and it plays DS games, and so you can get those too. So right this on. is something, and I never thought I'd get one because again, the guy who makes them stopped making them. She probably bought it years ago mm -hmm. when they were reasonably priced. <laughs> <laughs> the 3DS, I think it seems like everything with the 3DS has like gone up. Like it's like really sought after now. Yeah, it's kind of of that time where it feels like. Uh, well, I think it's because you know when you go into GameStops, mm -hmm. you don't find many that are complete anymore. You know, so sometimes I mean, you know, so like me again, I've mentioned this before, is that that is one of the systems I do actively collect for. Like when yeah. I go in every retro gaming store. Or at an expo, I do go straight to the DS and 3DS section, right? Just right. to see like what is there because you know because a lot of them aren't ported over mm -hmm. to to other systems. It's so unique to play them on the two screens. Yep. You know, and again to have the ability to actually capture that now, I'm I'm very happy. So that's a really amazing gift. Thank you so much. I think I need to get a, a new 3DS system, or maybe I don't know. I probably have to send my exam to Nintendo because I noticed on mine. There's a little crack right here by the hinge, so... Dude, maybe. Nintendo was great about... Are they still great about that? Oh, okay. hell yeah. Good, yeah. man. You should I was kind of worried. That. Yeah. Sooner than later, of course. Yeah. And everything, but yeah. Especially since it's so close. I mean, literally, it's 20 minutes from here, yeah. so you should totally... I'll get it there. back, like, within a week or something, possibly, yeah. so... So, again, thank you so much. That was... That was a holy grail. <laughs> right on, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, my last item, mm. which this actually came in the mail a couple days ago, so this barely made this video, but it's finally arrived... And I'm so happy. It's strictly limited. Clockwork Aquio for the PS4. Um, I have no idea what that so is. So this game, a little history about this game. This game was going to be an arcade game years ago. They tested it out in arcades to see how it would, would do. It didn't do very well. So I guess it got kind of it got scrapped at the time. Hmm. And um, but years later, um, I think Strictly Limited teamed up with uh, the, the original creators, and uh, they finished the game pretty much. So it's a colorful uh, action uh, platform game, pretty much. Mm. Um, nothing really more to say about it besides that. I mean, it's very colorful. It's a very fun game. If you guys have played games like, uh, a lot of people don't even know this game exists, uh, Nemo, the arcade game by Capcom, is very similar to that. 
And uh, it's two player co-op, just like that game too. And it's actually pretty fun. I would say suggest people play as the two regular characters. Don't play as a robot. The robot is kind of lame. But the other two characters are fun. But this it comes with a soundtrack. They, they threw everything in here yeah, and made this really cool. And um, it's just, it's just kind of like a, even uh, the amazing. box is nice. I know, right? <laughs> like, it's a, it's an amazing piece of history for a game like that that was going to pretty much be wow. thrown away to get restored and released. You know, it's just, it's, it's it's really good history, and um, <laughs> it's a fun game. Uh, you could download it for the Switch or the PS4 and everything like that. So. Um, Definitely something I'm very happy to have in the collection, and um, totally forgot about it too. Because, uh, yeah, it, the postman just knocked on the door. And I was oh, like, what? what? What is this? And I said, Oh, you got a package here, and boom, there it was. So, yeah, I have a couple of those pre orders like that out there too, where it shows up months or you know, yeah, you know, yeah, it was a while for that one. I, I forgot, wow. about it. never so. heard of this before. That's really cool. Yeah, man, it's huh. definitely like I, I'm just happy with the history with it. You know, yeah. they, they restored again. It was kind of be pretty much thrown away. There's a lot more history behind it. I'm, I'm not probably not telling you guys, but you guys can look it up. It's really interesting if you look it up, man. Hmm. And this is from the same creators who made um, the Wonder Boy series. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, this is part wow. part of there. I want to check that out. Okay. So, well, dude, all right, another pickups video in the bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I had a good time. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. So a lot of good stuff. Um, uh, where can people find you? Uh, they, can, they can find me <laughs> on the interwebs. <laughs> I got you off guard with that one. I know, though. you're like, okay, boomer. <laughs> <laughs> but no, man, it was really fun um, yes. showing you guys a lot of this stuff. and um, It was a guys, good mix. Yeah, Old definitely a good new, mix. Yeah. And we'll possibly have some more in the future for you guys. Let us know. Um, you know Thanks for watching. Thanks yeah. for subscribing. And, take and care. Uh, go subscribe to his channel, too. Yeah, what's my channel called? I can't remember. Uh, Radical... Something. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys later. See ya.